Hey ladies, this is Christy Young with The Gritty Gospel, and I am thrilled to be here with you. I want to drop the 12th day of Christmas video, and I wanted to marinate with you ladies as we think and ponder about the best gifts to give our kids this Christmas, uh, desiring to love them well and for eternity. I want to encourage you that one of the best gifts we can give our kids is to be a parent who is a student of the Word of God. Um, I often think that there is no wisdom apart from Christ. You know, the scriptures say in Proverbs that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So there really can be no wisdom apart from God. And so if we as parents are not cultivating a spirit of wisdom, petitioning the Lord for wisdom and daily being in the word of God, then we really have no wisdom to offer our children. Our best tips and advice secularly or in the world, um, while they're meaningful, they are not wisdom that we get to pass down for generations for in terms of life's purpose and mission and why we're here and how we were created and who God is. The more meaningful things, we can give our kids facts and figures and teach them how to unload and reload the dishwasher and how to make their beds and clean their rooms and be responsible. But all none of those things will save them for eternity. And so none of those, those things are knowledge, but they are not wisdom. And so I want to encourage you that the fear of the Lord, standing in awe of God, being at his feet, being in his word daily, that is the source of true wisdom. And I know that we would all love to pass to our children true wisdom for eternity with a desire to have our kids with us for all of eternity. Okay, number two. I So these are actually, I don't know if I said that, these are kind of five, five tips really, five notes. It's five of my thoughts on this topic about um, being a student of the Word of God. That really that our best gift to our children is that we would be students of the Word of God. The number, the second thought that I had was that if we really don't know doctrine and have good theology, then we can't really know peace. You can't really endure the waves of suffering, and your children won't either, if they don't have good theology, if they don't understand who Christ is, why he came, how we were created, why we're here, what our mission is here, um, why does God allow suffering? Um, just some of the deeper things that our children will ponder, we need to be processing with them systematically, or you know, we need to have being ha we need to have great discussions with them over theological things. You know, we talk about the we talk with them about great literature. We teach them how to write well. They, you know, learn how to do algebra and all these other co incredibly complicated things. And yet, the one area that I think is commonly forsaken is deep spiritual training to be able to talk about theological issues and apologetics and real things that matter for eternity. And so I would encourage that, that we would begin to marinate more on um, weaving into our daily lives, even simple conversations about deep things for our children, even to let them know that we want to go there with them, that if they have questions, we want to talk about it. I think you'd be surprised if you begin a conversation if you have not yet, you know, if you begin a conversation with your kids about deep things spiritually, then you, I think you'd be surprised by how many questions they have and how many thoughts. And it'd be great to go to the Word of God to let it guide you in that area. But I do believe that if we can know and build up good doctrine from the Word of God before suffering hits, before all the trials hit because they're coming, then we will really have peace. We can have peace amidst the storm. We can have peace and be still in our spirits, even when it feels like, you know, diagnoses are happening around us, when people are suffering around us, when we ourselves are suffering, or our children are suffering, or our family walks through great hardship. If we have good doctrine, we will know peace and we will have peace. Okay, my third thought is this. Uh, in Luke 640, the scriptures say that uh, when, a, when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And I think we should all marinate on that. What kind of example, what kind of teacher are we being for our students, for our children? Are we a person that we desire for them to model? Do we view life from an eternal perspective, living with eternity in mind? Are we cultivating the fruits of spirit in ourselves, the fruits of the spirit in ourselves, that, such that we would desire our kids to be like us, 
that's super humbling. And I get it that none of us are perfect. Or in fact, we're all very imperfect. But the beauty is that our children get to see us run to Christ. And the beauty is that our kids get to see us repent when we are wrong or when we make mistakes or when we sin. And all of that is beautiful and so good and part of their training. And then all of these, the, all of the spiritual disciplines, prayer, learning to surrender your time and your plans before the Lord, a fellowship with believers, desire for biblical spiritual community, godly community, um, spend all of those things, your desire for those things increase as you spend more time in the Word of God. And then in fact, how you prioritize your life and your time and your resources, all of those things are impacted by your time in the Word. And the more time that we spend in the Word of God, I believe the more we will begin to look more and more like Christ and have our families just to be more Christ-centered, more gospel-saturated, and we won't be as affected by the waves that the culture sends us or the waves of suffering. Even though they will come, we will have a firm anchor in Christ. Okay, my number four, every mom will get this, is that we're going to have to fight for our time in the Word. Because you might instantly be thinking, Christy, sure, yes, in theory, it's awesome to have time with the Word of God. But I have a nursing baby and I have three toddlers running around and I've got to cook meals and I have to do the laundry and I have extracurricular things to go to and, 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 and. I have a million tasks and chores ahead of me. Let me tell you, sister, I get it. I live that life. I understand. However, I think that the anchor for you needs to be Christ. And we, now I'm not saying, there are definitely days where I don't get to be in the word of God, but I try to make them few and far in between. I desire and I want to fight for, I realize as I'm getting older, I realize how much I have to fight for my time in the word of God because the enemy will do his best to take it from me, to steal it from me, to work, to help me to feel too busy, too overwhelmed, to you name it, fill in the blank, to spend time in the word of God. And so my encouragement to you is to make sure that you have time in the word of God. Even if you let Bluey play for your kids, even if you tell them to go outside and run around the grass for 30 minutes while mom has quiet time, I just think you need to protect your time in the word because it is what is going to help you to grow spiritually. Really having a quiet time with the Lord every day is absolutely essential if you desire to grow spiritually. I just, and then I also believe that it lifts you out of your troubles so that it gives you a new perspective, a fresh perspective every day. The scriptures say too that the word of God is alive. It's living and active. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. So God's word is living and can renew and refresh you from the inside out. And sisters, we desperately need to be renewed and refreshed. Ephesians 6, 12 too, it says that our struggle is not with flesh and blood, but it's with It's against the rulers and the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil and spiritual forces in the heavens. And so we have to know that basically we live in the matrix and we think that what we see is real, but what so much of what we don't see is real. And God's letting us know that we need to put on the full armor of God. And that includes the belt of truth, which is the word of God that we need to have that put on us every day to help us to fight the battles that we will face for the day. And they're not even battles we can always see. And so I want to encourage you to fight for the word of God. Even if you have to do it, put a Bible somewhere as you're nursing. If you nurse in the same spot every day and you need to put a Bible right there because you will be there and find yourself there. And so you can lift up the word of God. If you need to listen to sermons or as you unload the dishes, if you, in whatever way you can receive, listen to the Bible app on your phone as you drive to grab groceries or do a Sam's Club pickup, whatever it needs to be, sister, fight for it. That's my encouragement to you. And I'm doing the same thing. So be encouraged that we're all in this together. And then finally, when you feel weary and overwhelmed, often you've taken your eyes off Jesus. So I I received that. I heard that or read that a long time ago. Um, but can I tell you, I've held that close. When I feel overwhelmed in life, when I feel like the waves are crashing in around me, I can typically see and I can typically see that I and recognize that I have not spent time in the word of God and that instantly, maybe not instantly, but if I can just sit down with the word of God, calm my spirit and be present with the Lord and pray to him and ask him to still my heart, to give me peace and to 
I don't know, just to allow me to spend time with him in his word. Then it's amazing how, as I focus on Christ and the majesty, the scriptures bring to light the majesty of God, the power of God, the holiness of God, the strength of the Lord then all of a sudden, all of my troubles fade into the background as I move Christ into the foreground. And as I begin to focus on him and who he is and his power, then all of a sudden, I realize how small and petty or how, even if they're not petty, just how how the Lord can help me in my struggles and in my weaknesses and in my suffering, that he is a good, good father. He's been doing it for thousands of years and he is certainly not going to stop today, that he will carry me and walk with me through whatever he allows life to bring me. So that's it. I just want to say Merry Christmas on as we uh, release this 12th day of Christmas video. Aim to be a student of the Word of God. That is one of the best gifts, if not the best gift, you can give your kids this holiday season. Love you, sisters. Until next time.